Howdy folks, it's Beef here with Built by Beef. Um, in an earlier video I showed you, uh, I guess, how I put this thing together, the different components, kind of an overview of how I built it, I guess. No way to say it. But uh, I was thinking, uh, well, I did all that, showed you what, what it did and all that stuff, and I didn't show you how it worked. So, I'm going to make a quick video, it's kind of a boring one I guess, but uh, you know, by the chance it helps somebody out there uh, in the process, and their, you know, journey in making their own wind turbine or alternator, uh, and awesome, so hopefully it does, uh, either way, here, here you go. So I got my 14 gauge wire, uh, my spool here, are these I'm going to make a more of a rectangular um, coil, something like so. That's actually what I'm doing my main uh, alternator out of that I haven't finished yet. But um, so here we go. I run it through my two wheels off the spool, and then the first wheel on the second wheel into the actual coil spool itself. Yeah, and I run it over this. I have four bolts here. And I have a slot, slots in here on either end actually. But uh, this one I use for zip ties later on. But right now I run the wire over this bolt and off to the side and then wrap around this shaft right here. So, and uh, make sure your counter's reset to zero. <clears throat> and away we go. Fast as lightning. Not so much. Let me get that up tight as tight as I can anyways. Uh, well, this first row is always, at least for me, always seem to be more critical because it really kind of sets the tone for the rest of the rest of the winding really. So we'll try to get that. They go pretty quick. I mean, hopefully this video ain't too long. Five or ten minutes maybe. <coughs> but uh, I don't know. I personally keep a lot of tension on it. Uh, just by hand, not that, I mean, not crazy, I'm not yanking on it or nothing, but, <clears throat> you know, just so it pulls it nice and even and straight, especially with 14 gauge wire, it wants to stay bent, if you got kinks in it, and so there's one row down, we're at seven turns, so about seven turns on a, on a row, I'm guessing, that's roughly, give or take. Sometimes it gets off and you're jumping around. Hopefully not overlapping too much. But try to keep it nice and snug. But once you get going, you get you usually get it pretty good rhythm. No. Yeah, it's looking real nice, actually. Just hoping I do a good one for the for the camera. Come out. Actually, gonna look backwards on that counter. Come on, let's see. Making it harder on myself. Yeah. It'll come back to me. Let's straighten it out a second here. Move this down this time. Let's get this over. There we go. Right in the groove. I'm just gonna use a plastic little pry tool and not metal either and then scratch that enamel off and you ruin your coil I mean if it makes contact I guess you know, as long as it don't make contact with anything else then you're good but I don't want to risk it anyways we're, at, we're coming up on 25 turns right there so yes yeah, This one there. Number eight. And these I've been going 70 turns, trying to make a 24 volt system. Uh, I don't know all the math and science behind it, but um, some places I've seen 65, seen 70, I think I've seen 60. 
So I went for 70 and hope for the best. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to get out of it, but she makes some good power from kind of what everybody else is talking about. So I'm going with the 15 coil, 20 magnet um, system. So should definitely make some good power as long as everything's you know right on it. My first one, so we'll see. Yeah, this coil's looking real good. This roll even gonna make it to 70 turns. I don't know if it's gonna make it. This is the end of the roll. I'm just kind of doing this for a demo, so we'll go as far as that roll will take us. Maybe it'll, it'll be close. Not gonna be quite 70 though. Actually, I have all my coils made for my stator already, but you know, probably notice this rectangular shape. <clears throat> is bigger than some of the others that have a rectangular shape because uh, actually the magnets I got are three inches by inch and eighth by quarter inch thick but they are in 52 and they're pretty dang strong so I think I'll be all right in that case because uh, I know most people seem to have the Two by or one by two by a half inch, and uh, if I notice, not all of them are running uh, the top grade. Um, what you call it? Uh, rare earth or neodymium magnet. So I figure it's a it was a it was a cost thing is my issue. So I found a deal on those, and uh, that's what I went with. So uh, you'll see where I this where I fed this wire in to start with, and it's just big enough for a little guitar. I get in. Usually the tail's long enough. Yeah, we only made 63 turns on this one, but oh well, it's basically you know it's a demo. So end of the roll. So. Another thing, I got a heck of a deal on this wire too. It's, 45 pounds for $16. I'll never catch a deal again. Somebody puts a decimal place in the wrong place and then I catch a break. All right, so you put, so I put, flip my handle out. Yeah, this handle, I, I flip it out, you know, straighten it out so it doesn't rock as much. I can turn it. It doesn't want to flop and stay in one direction quite as bad. Still does it, but. <clears throat> so, yeah, get this close. You see there. Then I go on the other side, and um, do the same thing. Zip tie that. In the middle, I got a choice. You can either do, or I could either do tape. Sometimes it's a pain to feed through this. Sometimes not. Um. Or you can just do another zip tie, or whatever floats your boat. I'll try to do the tape this time just to show you. I think it's gonna get um, sticks on through it. Sometimes it goes right through, and other times it don't work. But. with tape at least on one of them just so you can see so I pull that tape over there and if you didn't see my other video yet um, spool is made out of a uh, polycarbonate fiberglass um, not not fiberglass um, plexiglass um, and I was not maybe a kind of material people would usually have I got some of it for another project a couple of years back and uh, it actually works real good for this because um, I'll show you in a second. Again, if you haven't seen the other video I posted about explaining my, uh, I'll put another zip tie. 
the other side. And um, about how I built this thing. Um, And uh, see a lot of people have to pull off the spools. Or they pull a spool off their their winder. That's when uh, these well, people have done it like this. I'm sure they have. But this is one of the biggest questions I had is how to release the coil when it's done. And there's other videos out there. There's lots of people doing this nowadays. And uh, but I didn't for whatever reason I didn't find a whole lot explaining how to release the coil when you're done or how to make that old to make that work right so this is what I ended up coming up with on this part but I'm sure somebody's done it somewhere I'm don't doubt it but so you pull that off and these are drilled straight through I when I drilled these I you know cut them and drilled them all together so this is drilled straight through you know sandwich together then I left this one drilled straight through, you know, and it, this polycarbonate, you know, holds those holes nice and straight and holds the, the bolts, you know, perpendicular to this piece. So it keeps its shape and they don't wallow out. And so um, all I do is, you know, this little spacer, keep the gap. You can change it in and out, you know, if you want a thicker or thinner spool or coil. And then uh, what I did is uh, see the bolts collapse in. I grew this one in towards the middle on the holes not way back here, well, some back here, but mainly in the middle, just so they can tilt in and then you can pull it off without screwing up the coil. And there you go. Nice, pretty, uh, tightly wound coil and a uh, fairly short amount of time. I mean, these are a little faster without explaining, but then uh, when I'm ready to go, I just put this back on and this outside plate you know keeps the bolts straight despite having the slots cut in the other one and I just you know pop screw these back on pop back on and screw them on uh, actually I put that the spacer back in too it's not that difficult so just kind of shove that in there and yeah and you, same thing you gotta kind of hold it together by put your hand there and you just I usually try to tighten up the two bolts caddy corner from each other you know that way it's hopefully tightened down even I mean spacer is not going to get too out of whack <clears throat> so and there we have ready for an another the next coil right there just tighten these down not much just just barely snug you know and boom, I'm ready to go and pull my handle down reset my counter and we are ready for another one and uh now since I'm doing it I've got this spool of uh I think it's like 26 gauge they say it's supposed to be 18 wires, but all well, mixing different coils. So, I mean, that's a useless wire, except for kind of. But I kind of got it. And this other external spool holder. So, same way I'll feed it up through my, my wheels here. I'm going to show you, a, if, once again, if you haven't seen the, how I, the video of me explaining how I made this coil winder thingy. Um, one other feature is kind of nice if, you know, especially if you're doing a little wire like this, real light wire or whatever. Find that around so it's you know, pull off right. There it is. Um, let's see, do I got the is my bolt right here that's what I was so 
professional cinematography here. What I'm doing, I'm pulling off this handle. It's not really in the shot there, but that's what I'm doing. Pull off this handle, and uh, this is a half inch. Uh, rod that I use for this, I can call it drive shaft or whatever. So that comes in handy for. really want to make it sing and wind them coils quick all I gotta do is power up see how this goes that was probably cut through my hand if it went fast enough to stop this time but Ooh, that's real fast. Slow down. Yeah. This probably won't be the prettiest thing, but let's go for 300 turns. What the heck? This is the first time I've actually done this. I've run them with the drill before, but not this fast and not on this wire. pretty good little wire it's easy to make up your uh, gaps and without getting build up too bad All that good. And same process, 
you already seen that, so I won't make this video any longer than it already is. So that's it. That's my coil winder. That's how I wind my coils so far. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave them in there or you can talk directly. Uh, I'm sure there's some way to do it on here. I don't know. New to YouTube. New to the YouTube thing too. So appreciate you watching. And um, yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll keep trying to put more up. This is Beef with uh, Built by Beef. Over now.